Florin, and I'm a petroleum engineering student at the University of Texas in Austin. I'm also a summer intern for Key Energy Services. I want to introduce you to my learning modules about my intern experience and some of the other things that I've learned. The main learning objectives for this module are define workover rig, name some jobs we use workover rigs for, and list two duties of an operator, derrick man, and floor hand. Here is a list of key terms. A workover rig is a rig used to perform one or a variety of operations on a producing oil and or gas well to try to increase production. Tongs are large wrenches used to make up or break out drill pipe, casing, tubing, or other pipe. A tubing job is the act of pulling tubing out of and running it back into a well. A rod job is the act of pulling rods into and out of the well bore. First, it is important to note that there are two types of rigs, drilling rigs and workover rigs. However, in this presentation, I'll only talk about workovers or service rigs. These rigs are used for many reasons and come in many different sizes. They can be found onshore and offshore. Although there are dozens of sizes of workover rigs, I'll illustrate four examples. Choice of rig size is determined by well requirements. So typically, the bigger the well, the bigger the workover rig. Also, each size has a different amount of horsepower, different height, and requires a different number of crew workers. Ideally, rods and tubing would be perfectly straight, but they are not. Rod jobs and tubing jobs are both examples of ongoing well maintenance. Both the rods and tubing reach to the bottom of the well, which could be thousands of feet deep. As the pump jack moves, it lifts the rods up and down anywhere from 5 to 25 feet. This movement may cause wearing to the rods or tubing, including broken or unscrewed rods and holes in the tubing. You may recognize this diagram from the Rigs 101 section. Workover rigs can be used for a variety of maintenance reasons, ranging from repairs to plugging the well. Two of the most common jobs that require a workover rig are rod jobs and tubing jobs. Tubing is placed in the well from the top to the bottom, and a rod is then run through the tubing. For a rod job, you first pull the rods out of the well three rods at a time. Then you perform the maintenance or repair needed, and the rods are then run back into the well. Rod jobs are most commonly needed when the pump breaks. There are tons of tools and equipment needed to finish a rod job, but here's a list of some of the most important tools. At rig school, I had the opportunity to run rods and use the rod elevator, rod hook, and hydraulic tongs. Although the rods are very thin and not too heavy, the tongs weigh over 300 pounds. A tubing job also involves running the tubing out of the well and running it back in after the maintenance or repair job is finished. Most tubing jobs are needed because the tubing can be worn so badly that it has holes requiring the tubing to be replaced. Here is a list of tools commonly needed for a tubing job. Some of the tools are very similar to the tools used to run rods. However, a blowout preventer is needed for tubing jobs so oil and gas can't escape from the well. Now, let's focus on people working on a service rig. The derrick man, floor hand, and trainees all report to the operator, who reports to the supervisor. The man in charge of the entire operation is known as the company man. On a workover rig site, there is typically a three to five man crew. Sometimes there is a two man crew called a swab crew, but this is pretty rare. The crew almost always consists of an operator, derrick man, and floor hand. If there are more than three people on a crew, then there are typically more floor hands needed for that job. Here are three pictures that show each crew member's job position. The operator is in charge of monitoring daily operations and communicating information with the rig supervisor and company man. They are also in charge of running the rig's motor, the tongs, and some other important machinery. Operators must keep a lookout for the actions of the other crew members and any safety hazards. They are safety leaders, and they must ensure the crew fills out a work plan every day. Operators can use stop work authority whenever they feel a job is unsafe. First and foremost, it is important that the derrick man is not afraid of heights, 
because they usually work 50 feet or more above the ground. They must also be able to count and handle rods and tubing, use tally tape, and calculate figures. They should never detach from fall protection in case of emergencies. Also, they have the ability to use stop work authority anytime an unsafe action takes place. Floor hands work on the ground, catwalk, or rig floor. Their duties include operating machinery and equipment and maintaining equipment. Floor hands must analyze every safety precaution they can think of, and they must frequently look up to communicate with the derrick man. They also have the ability to use stop work authority. Now let's review what we've learned. A workover rig is a rig used to perform one or a variety of operations on a producing oil and or gas well to try to increase production. Workover rigs are used for rod repairs, tubing maintenance, casing repairs, remediation and cementing, isolating depleted zones, converting former producing wells into injection wells, pump packer and valve repairs, and plugging and abandoning. Some operator duties include supervised daily operations, run machinery and equipment, and speak with job coordinators. Some derrick man duties include count rods and tubing, use tally tape and tank gauge, and calculate figures and amounts. And lastly, some floor hand duties include monitor and analyze operations, use tongs and pumps and other equipment, and clean and maintain equipment. Thank you for watching the Work Over Rig Overview part of my journey. I hope you learned something useful. See you next time.